but there's no one there, is there? I've actually got it to myself. Unbelievable. This is an estuary. We're fishing for bass and we might fish for something else, but I should have been here set up half hour ago waiting for this moment and there I am now rushing so wish me luck um, it is the 18th of August it's 12.09 and I'm in Cumbria wish me luck got the wife over there in the van she's now coming back this is the start of the video I've just got to get my reels on chuck out some baits on that and then it's uh, I'll show you what I'm doing after that but I've got all week it's forecast rain all week, but there you go. It's cut for the intro. Found a big uh, jellyfish when I first turned up here. Eh? Right, let's get you here. Let's check on your in frame. Bloody thing keeps moving around because we're on all this weed. I'm only chucking it out. You can't cast on this ground because it just it's all plant weed and stuff no way you can that's why i brought these rods we'll talk about these rods in a bit but it's all right it's not my mum's rod so i'll not keep going on about it stop there at least I'm balls the clicker up that's a good thing isn't it what a numpty it's because I'm rushing I bet you I bet you as damaged the clicker because I'm always damaging the clicker but it's still clicking loudly so it's still reasonably okay so it should be all right all right I'll get the next one baited up now same stuff. Oh, you in shot there? Can't believe I did that. That's literally because I'm rushing. Because I said to, I said to Karen, uh, that would be the wife. I said, uh, I should have had my gear all set up by now. And, uh, I should have all my gear set up ready just to cast out the uh, rig of choice today is a tort flapper and this time we'll take the bloody clicker off if I 
I'd have really whacked that with another red dump out of the Brook Cliff in Deathly. And it still might be broke, but it's clicking loudly. Well, I didn't break the clicker, but what a crap car. Felt as though the line was all under. Well, it's out short. That rod, I just wanted to get the rods out. I don't know what happened with that car, Steve. I think the line was all under. These things happen, you see. Should have been baited up by now and out, but we're out, we're out and we're fishing. So I'll put my bait away. I've had to use my sandwich bag. I didn't want to bring a huge bait bag because if I fish, if I fish off the rocks, that bait bag will go in the top of my underneath the hood of my rucksack. That's brilliant. So I'm just going to buy another one. So what am I fishing for? <laughs> been wanting to do this since last year. I've been trying to, well, I was going to come here sort of like in September, October, November time to try and catch some, but things changed in life and, uh, I weren't coming up there on my own. I didn't want to come on my own and didn't want to bring the wife up, so didn't have anyone to fish with to come up there to do this. And probably a good thing, really, because um, now I can just give it a go myself, can't I? I'm going to try that. One and a half bread loaves. First ever time I've tried fishing for mullet. So, break it all up as best you can. Should have done this at the van as well, shouldn't I? Trouble is, this uh, bucket comes in handy for other things, if you know what I mean, when you're living in a van. Uh, obviously not in the bucket, but in a bag. Enough said. But if you've ever lived in a van, camped in a van, wild camped, um, you should know what I mean. Now I don't know if I can get the water, I might do, that's coming in rapid rate of knots. So I've got some rigs. Trouble is I've left my weights in the van. So I've just got them baited rods out and they ain't out perfect. Um, one of them, the hooks need sharpening, but um, it's meant to be raining and there's now a cloud coming above. So we'll just have to see what happens, won't we? But we'll bait this up, uh, bait this up. We'll chuck this bread in the water. We'll uh, let it do its stuff. I'm just going to mix it up so it's uh, like a um, sort of like a, not a dry mix but fairly so it sits there and don't get washed away with the tide. doing I'm that jeez this stuff is dangerous so there's my rig away
clip it on. Get this uh, bread mixed up now. Should take me other bucket down to fill up so I can wash my hands. But I think that is about done. So there's my bread. I shall make it into balls and chuck it in. Uh, I want me other bucket, as it's a messy old job. Too runny, I think. It will get some more bread in it. it's a little bit a little bit what's he parking there for am I now going to get in trouble because I shouldn't be fishing here well the water went all out you could you could walk across there so don't need a lot of water do you for this it's all there in the cave not expecting to catch anything today but you got to be in it to win it haven't you I'm only baiting it up once with this bread. You know, whoever it is in that truck ain't getting out, so he ain't got environment agency written on him. Friends of Greta. Right, that's a bit more doughy now. And I've still got enough bread for. So there we are. A bit more doughy.
Well, what I've done is, what I've done, out. you got all that. I've got two rods out for bass, flounder, whatever. Um, and I've got that small little rod for my first ever attempt at m uh, mullet fishing. There is mullet air, I know there's mullet air, or there was last year. So we just gotta hope and pray that they're here today. Um, that right hand rod I shall bring in shortly. Sharpen the hooks up because they need sharpening and rebait up again. So that'll be done. Yeah, absolutely picturesque. I can't show you that way because then you'll know where I am. And those in the know will know where I am, but keep it keep it to yourself because some old boys that I know or did knew last year. Um, they like come fishing here and they don't want millions. But I'm gonna blank. It's gonna be. Will I blank every session? Time will tell, but let's see. Let's wait and find out. It is yellow warnings for wind today. It's supposed to be 41 mile an hour now, and it's not. So hopefully I shall just about miss it. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll miss it and get past it. Tomorrow is torrential rain, Sunday rain, Monday rain, Tuesday rain, Wednesday tiny little bit of rain for an hour. So hopefully sometime this week I shall get some fishing done because I have got to get some fishing done as because because I've got to get some fishing done. You know, I need to get some videos done. I like to fish two or three times, well, three or four times really. It all depends on how my hip is. But yeah, so the water's coming. There's loads of sandbanks out there. This is an estuary. It's absolutely fantastic. I've got cows behind me. As you can see through their absence. The wife is over there. I'm sure you can see her. She's there somewhere, about over there. And we slept there last night, so. Got air at midnight. Absolutely shattered I was. Absolutely shattered. But yeah, well I'm gonna pull this right hand rod in first because it was a sh rubbish cast for a start. And two, one of the hooks are blunt. So I'm gonna sharpen that up. Whoa, that might give it away, mightn't it? Choof choof! There you go. I've never mullet fished for before. I've bought some rigs online from a chap who's pretty good at catching bass and I altered them because that ain't how I wanted to fish because I think he reads ties rigs on and stuff. I don't want to do any tying there, I just want to do clipping. So I tied rig bodies to it. Um, to the snoods that I got off him which are his tracers and then I made some more rigs so I then researched online and made some more rigs so I've got many rigs Mike has given me some weights to try which are what I want so I'm right happy we're using them and we'll just see what happened today it might not happen they might not turn up today it's just the way it is but this water comes over all this grass and I think there's that um well, if you buy it in Norfolk, that seaweed stuff starts with an S. Can't remember what they call it. But I'll reel the right hand rod in first, rebate up, I think. That's what I will do. Now, if it's bouncing around, I can't help it because we're on weed. See, well, we're on bushes and it's. Uh, bit bouncy
anticipating on having to move back because uh, I'm just anticipating because it's it's shooting in now. Hopefully I won't have to go back too far. It will make fishing a little bit awkward. Weeds and crab, I think. Weeds and crab. It's the way it is though, isn't it? You can only fish where you are. On the days that you're there, and that's it. Tide's coming in quick. Tide is coming in really quick. I'm gonna to have to move back. Right, you've got to move everything back um, because the water's coming in quick. So,
Look at that! <laughs> well, what happened to him? Things you find on the riverbank. He's got better gnashes than me. Hey, I'm Brett. <coughs> Joking. Right. Yeah, water's coming in. Yeah, this uh, this uh, fresh water, this mullet fishing is new to me. I think if I want to catch mullet, I probably need if I want to catch mullet, I probably need to concentrate on it because I've now got to move everything back. It's coming up. Hopefully, it won't get over here. I'd say it comes into this bay here. Yeah. Bugger. Yeah, this ain't good for my hip. It's not. Oh, I'm moving all my stuff back now.
I don't know how long the bread lasts on the uh, hook. Um, if they're biting at it and you see the tip move, it don't last long. But it's all trial and error, so I'm going to leave it out for another five minutes. I know some of you will be screaming, screaming at me. First ever time I'm doing mullet fishing. Nobody comes with me and teaches me, do they? Because, you know, nobody likes me. I've done that much research, but there's always bits and bobs that you don't know, isn't there? So, you can only do what you can do, can't you, with the knowledge that you have. But I don't believe it, I've just filmed loads and uh, I had it on photo of all things. So I had the camera pointed up here while I moved all my stuff back. What's happened is, so I'll quickly go over it. I've moved back. That's where I was stood a minute ago and the water's in. So I've moved back and I'm hoping it don't come up any higher. Um, high tide is in 20 minutes. So I'd like to think it's not gonna come up another foot, foot and a half. So I should be okay. I'm really jarred up, I've took loads of photographs. I've reeled this rod in. I think the last thing you saw me do was chuck out my mullet rod. Um, I've just moved it back, got my net out, you've missed all that. And I've reeled in the right hand rod. And what I've done is sharpened the hooks and cast it out. And the wind has picked up a little bit now. Um, and there's clouds coming over black comb so uh, I think it might be raincoat on time I might drop these rods Bit of a balls up that, weren't it? Took two bloody pictures, so that's two lots of video and I've just wasted. But never mind, it is what it is. Let's reel this in while we're at it. Need some footage, don't we? Otherwise, we ain't gonna have out. So I'm not organised with this mullet fishing, I've baited up out there. Tell I've not done this before, can't you?
I think I need to just go mallet fishing and concentrate on mallet fishing. Because I think you have to change your baits a lot. Let's get this other rod reeled in quick. I've got no footage. <laughs> That was close. Well, that wind's come and gone. So hopefully, hopefully the wind ain't gonna, it'll go. Well, it's the first time I've ever felt a gust and wind, put it that way, for a long time. Because on our coast, they say gusts up to 30 mile an hour or whatever, and it's just 30 mile an hour winds. But over here, it actually gusts. I think that's got me, surely. Samphire. I think this is samphire weed. I don't think you get long fish in here, but, um, Hopefully, we'll get some time there. Couple of squid heads. Get these chucked out. Not the greatest of bait, but well, not how I've put them on anyway. I can't believe that I haven't filmed. going to be out for long because one of the heads come off. There you have it. Absolutely cracking place to fish. Absolutely fantastic. It is nice but different. I'm a bit bit hypo at the minute because I've put two loaves of bread out there. 
could be all gone now, can't it? I could be just wasting my time. Um, I'm watching this bread. I should have my box down there, really. But the water's there. God knows how much further it's going to come in. Time is 20 past one. That is high water. I don't think I'm going to get washed off here. But trouble is my lines are going to the left and I'm fishing for mullet over there that's where I'd put my bread so uh, things ain't gone quite right but it's a learning curve isn't it if you think you're gonna uh, tie some rigs get your rod out ooh matron get your rod out and catch um, you've obviously never been out on the town as an 18 year old <laughs> failing but then, never mind. All joking aside, that is a bit of humour, that. It's not going to happen, is it? The rod that I'm using is an auger rod. And I think it's for sea fishing because it's got hard chromed eyes on it. And uh, I'll show you that in a bit. So it's got a cork handle, really thin. I've teamed it up with a small reel. And it is an auger raider nine foot. Um, it has got chrome and pink eyes and they're hard chrome eyes all the way up and it's like new I saw it on eBay it was 20 quid 30 quid probably for say 35 to 40 pound delivered unbelievable I forgot I had it another one I was going through all me uh, East Anglian rods for freshwater fishing and they were a little bit bendy and this one has just got a right amount of bend apparently um, right happy with it so another cracking rod that is my mullet rod I shall use nothing else could even use that rod for well I won't because I've got my old Shakespeare bass and mackerel rod in the van but I can use that for bass and mackerel be brilliant Well, the old bass on that it'd be brilliant bit of deja vu there do i repeat myself often right my hip i am strong with my hip i'm gonna have to sit down whether the bread flake is still on it or not it should be um i'm fishing on grass at the minute but further over there this is one of them gusts that's come look i'm fishing on grass look with flowers but over here there's like a gorsy bush and it's quite hard to walk on but this is where we're at at the minute you want to see the rods don't you and this is where we're fishing so now that is one of them one of them Daiwa rods there with the yellow shrink tube that's the original shrink tube you can't get I don't, I've never seen that anymore um, they're my original Daiwa Sandstorms uh, ZS 12 M's M stands for multiplier 12 is uh, 12 foot rods and they'll be cracking rods for me to pendulum when I learn to pendulum with John uh, Alan sorry um, I'm looking forward to it and I want to use these rods I want to use them so I can off the ground cast them as well but I can't off the ground cast them here because of this this here it, everything will get snagged up in it so on here fishing those rods I expect I need to put some bread flake on but like I say my hip I need to sit down I've been stood up too long it has been an on the go session up to now but the wind has changed direction again the wind was oh it's going to be rain coming isn't there the wind was blowing literally where you're pointing um and then it turned around to blow east south east which is over my back as over this camera is what you're looking at and now it's blowing down the river it's now blowing west well if you can watch this 
I guess you can hear the water. It's rippling slightly. It's a little bit of a breeze. The blades of grass are moving in the wind. Um, there's not much more I can describe apart from that for those that are sat at home feeling as though they're here. I know you're not here, but at least you can watch this video and hopefully think you are. Well, I was told to use cheap bread for uh, cheap bread for the bait. Well, this bread is that cheap, it's like gone off. And as soon as I cast out, it's, what can I say, it's hard. It's gone uh, dry. So when you nip it around the hook, it don't nip around the hook because it isn't doughy. So. 45p bread from Tesco's ain't no good. So I'll have to go up to the 75p bread and use that. Um, because I've just nipped that on the hook and nothing happened. I'm gonna chuck the rest of my bait out here when the water drops down. Um, I think it's a case of coming here to fish for mullet if they're here. Now, last year when I was there, there must have been 100 in there, swimming around, mulling about. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to concentrate on the bass fishing. And what I'll do is I'll try um, for a mullet in a harbour or something. So I might use this bread for... What I'll do is I'll use this bread for out there baiting, for ground baiting ground baiting you know what I mean I shall use that and get some nicer bread which is soft and pliable for putting on the hook I literally put that bit of bread this whole loaf like this I guess the other one is the same but I put it on and literally it wouldn't do up around the hook if you know what I mean you know when you nip it around the hook around the straight part the shank of the hook it um it just wouldn't bind together i pressed it worked it and uh 
just come undone again. So, I'll tell you what I might do, actually. Let's put a bit of, uh, let's put a smaller weight on that and let's put a strip of squid on. See what we get. See what we get. Because this ain't worked. And I want to try and catch a fish for definite. I've got to bring back in because the head flew off, didn't it? So I've only got one bait out there on a hook. Now these mountains hopefully will hold the rain back. I've got a great big round cloud over black comb, but the cloud is engulfing black comb, so it might just stop it traveling over here because it might forecast rain, but it might not rain here due to the uh, structure of the land. You can be in one valley here and it's chucking it down with rain and you can literally drive over and into another what I call valley, which it is because it's two bloody fells either side of it and it's uh, bloody sunny. That's, that's how weird it is up here. You can't go by the weather, you just got to come up. But the weather forecast is shocking for this week. The water goes across the road. <laughs> Everyone's coming down and having to turn and back, having to turn back. Three rods in a new mark um, that, and a discipline of fishing that I've never done before is a bit stressful. And uh, I'm now gonna put a piece of squid on that rod and I'm gonna just chuck it out of a smaller weight on I'll put a 40 ounce on uh 40 gram sorry 40 ounce that'd be a laugh wouldn't it well it wouldn't really would it that's an eight don't feel confident enough I don't feel confident enough I think what I need is is a harbour where I can just chuck my stuff in and drop it over the side I've got all grass and everything here my, all my gear's gone round the wrong way so everything's in the way so let me get some squid Careful, these little tiny hooks are killers. Right, towel. We'll cast it out over this way. and braid with a glove, new glove on but it's only light.
right, we'll keep an eye on that. So they've got a small 20 ounce waiting. Let's get this reeled in quick. Well, nothing on that, and uh, let's get this baited up, shall we? God, walking around in this stuff is hard work. It's like getting all into your feet and getting tangled up. Right, we've got squid on that again. I have got other bait, but I'm just using squid at the minute. I want to use it up. So uh, let's get this chucked out. Now then, let me tell you about these rods. Yeah. Here we go. We've got the Pen Fathom 12s on it. Taped onto a Fuji reel seat. And this is the one that I bought off eBay. 
it is a Daiwa sandstorm. Let me hold it up here. Daiwa sandstorm ZS12M. It's the multiplier one, as I said. Beautiful own Daiwa eyes. They aren't Fuji eyes, they're Daiwa eyes, they're yellow. And so on. And it's a fantastic rod. Um, this is my original one. This is the one I had 26, 27 years ago. And I bought that rod. And I then realized, because I thought all rods were 12 foot, I didn't know any different. And then I saw a four, 13 foot rod, which was a Daiwa San, uh, Supercast. So I bought that. And what I wish I'd done, wish I'd done, was bought the 13 foot Sandstorm. Because I never, I then packed up fishing a while later. Um, I never got back into it. And then obviously when you get back into it, they're new rods now, aren't they? Different rods are new now. Um, so, couldn't buy one. But I found one on eBay. A few times I found one on eBay. And then my best mate, well, have I got any best mates? I've got a very good mate down in uh i've got a best mate and he's uh he's like a brother my mate marky um but good really good mates i've got danny and brett and uh, there's many more but there's andrew jones there's, i've got quite a few i've got a very good friend down in kent that got me picked that rod up for me from faversham and that's Danny Shaw. He picked that rod up and brought it up to my house and then I titivated the top section up because the eyes were a little bit, some of the paint had come off, so I wrapped them all up and painted them. And it's a Kraken rod. And this is where I'm getting to when I picked the rod up and was reeling in. That rod is so light, it's unbelievable. Um, it is, it's, I know it's a foot and a bit, foot and a half shorter than my Kenzakis, but they feel lighter than my Kenzakis. That's all I wanted to say. They're a nice rod and they're nice and light, and I like the old sandstorms because I've always had one. And uh, they're all nice, the new ones, plenty of yellow on them in there and stuff, but. They're yellow at the bottom, aren't they? And a bit of yellow in the sandstorm, and that's it. They're, they're nice, they're pleasant to look at while you're fishing, but they're nice and light. So I aren't fishing for mullet now. I've given up. Can't believe it. I'll chuck this bread in, I think, because it is. A bucket out. Clean my bucket out. I think if I come here fishing, I need to just purposely fish for mullet. Uh, maybe have another rod out just to see. But it's looking like a blank, isn't it? Now I've got a longer stein in there. I'm going to use it today. I might just chuck it over there. Fished out there, and now I'm fishing over there. I'm gonna fish down there. I'll reel that other rod in and bring it in. Right, I'm gonna end this here because it's 21 minutes. Right, let's reel this little tiny rod in. I don't think I've got anything on it, but it was tapping away. It could just be the tide. Yeah, it's weed on it. I think there's a lot of crabs out there. I think I'm going to retire this now. Um, I would 
would say my bait's gone on the other one as well. It is what it is, isn't it? There's going to be a lot of this. Let's hope I catch while I'm up there. I really do. I can't be doing. I can't be doing with another full week of not catching any fish. <sighs> Never mind. We give it a try. The bread wasn't right. I'm not making excuses for myself at all. Might sound it, but first time ever doing this, and uh, see, Mallet could be right over the other side of the estuary, couldn't he, today? And I could bread up down there and bait it up like I have done. That don't mean you're going to get, they're going to come trotting over here because they go, ooh, I can smell that bread. Does it? Don't mean that at all. It's uh, just the way it is. All right, let's get this reeled in. These rods are so light, it's unbelievable. I can't even feel that hardly. Just wish I'd, uh, mind you, I've, I've released some of the pressure off the grip wires to pull through this weed. There you have it. A weed fish. It's what you get in all rivers, isn't it? Oh, see what I mean? I nearly fell over then. Right, let's get the utilise this bucket. Now you ain't bending down so far now. bait elastic this on I'm going to walk back to my box which for me is a lot of effort
can't believe. I can't believe how hard it is to walk through this little bit of gorse. Um, but there you go. It's the way it is, isn't it? So I'm going to put a bit of bait elastic on this bit of squid. See if that helps it stay on. I don't normally have any problem with squid staying on the hook. But it is what it is, isn't it? Helps if you can find the end, doesn't it? So this bait elastic is from boys. This is what John Spalton gave me. It's good stuff. Very, very fine. Very, very fine. Right, we shall whack this out, right over there I think, well, when I say whack it out, yeah, we'll just chuck it out. Well, I saw some come off, but I didn't see a lot come off, so... But it lasted it on round the hook as well. That's out. That's... Oh, let's put it down, because then it'll... There you go. So I'll get this rod put away now. I think this is what I found earlier on. <laughs> hey, how did he die? Did he get stuck in the mud? Did he just fall down and die like most sheep? Not bad teeth, look. Still had some goo in him. Loads of bits of spine vertebrae around there, but picked clean by the crows. That is picked clean by the crows. Right, we've got two rods out. I've got one over near the stanchions, and we've got one out there. Still on squid. Yeah, I know it's not the best bait, but it's a go-to bait. It is a good bait. If there's anything out there, flounder will take that. A bass, if it's out there, will take that if it's hungry. You know, these fish do eat squid. But I think every hook that's come past has been stripped. And that just says to me that there's a... Bollocks. <sighs> Reels fell off. That just tells me that there's a lot of uh, crabs out there. So I'll bring you back in a minute. I'm going to get this rod put away once I pick the reel up. And I'll see you in a bit. So, reel just fell off. This, these reel seats are a little loose. I don't know whether I need a bit of plastic in it or something. So 
What dog's that? Vistler. A what? Hungarian Vistler. All right. Big, isn't he? <laughs> Everybody says that. It's just an ordinary day dog to us. Is it? We're used to him. A lot of chihuahuas round our way. <laughs> Big to me. Right, so here's the auger. Auger, and it is a Raider 9 foot. If anyone out there knows what this rod was for, I think it's for sea fishing because it's got the pink eyes and they're all hard chromed. I know they use that in freshwater fishing, but then we've got quite a large eye for freshwater fishing at the top. But yeah, I think Auger used to, perhaps they used to make freshwater rods as well, I don't know. But if anyone's out there can let me know, it is an Auger, high tensile Auger, Raider, nine slash plus i thought it said nine foot but there you can see that got a little tiny thing on there to put your hook i guess it's for fly uh mackerel well i can use it for mackerel mullet i can use it for anything can't i but yeah if anyone out there knows what it was actually made for Please let me know. I've got two auger rods. And um Chester Avon, really. Your Simba Beachcaster one, 14 foot tournament beachcaster. And this one which I'm going to use for mullet fishing again now. It's not in there for long. It's a typical estuary. It's in and then it's it's going out. It's not like the beach. Now I've got to walk down on wet mud, which I'm going to do. I go for a walk down there. Look, they've gone all the way down there. There's a gate there, and then you go over them dunes. I'd like to see what's down there. But I'm afraid to say... Uh, I'm going for my hip operation. Well, I ain't going for a hip operation. I haven't even started the process. But I've now got it into my head to start the process, because things are getting hard. And there'll come a time, I expect, when I can't do a video. And uh, it'll be bit upsetting really because I've put so much effort into the channel by going fishing Tom's put loads of effort in with editing and looking after the channel all the technical stuff and everything um, and it'll be a shame but I'm still fishing I'm still planning on going fishing but it is hard work and I'm afraid to say when it comes near the end when Hopefully I'm in the process of having it done or getting somewhere and my fishing is at the same marks all the time and they're at a river or on a beach that's easy to get to then you're just going to have to bear with me because there's either a video or there's not a video but rewards for the amount of effort you put in on YouTube the amount of effort I put in on YouTube it's, it's not it's not it's not you can you can't you know what you get pays for your fuel nearly nearly that's all I'll say oh it's an aeroplane um, yeah but it don't pay for all of it so there's always an outlay in there but it's my hobby and I just enjoy filming it, so that's what I do. It's what I've chosen to do, and that's what I do. I enjoy bringing the videos every Wednesday for you. But at some point, when my hip gets worse and worse, I mean, I'm struggling walking on this gorse now. And they've gone walking down there, and I just want to go walking down there now. I want to put my box on, my rods on, and walk down there and over them dunes and see what the beach is like there. That's what I want to do. But I don't think I can because it's looking like a long walk and they're making mincemeat of it. I can't do that. 
And Karen said to me the other day, she says, well, it's now affecting your life. And uh, it's going to affect your life more. So I know I should have had it done, but I've had houses to do. I've got a house coming up when I go back home. And it's all about money, isn't it? It's about having money to do what you can... Ooh, is that a bite? And I like to get these hours done because it pays good money for what I do. I do a lot of work though. So, um, yeah, what can I say? I've got to do these houses. Yeah, I could have been in the system being processed, but hopefully they'll look at my hip and they'll might bump me up the list a bit. I don't think it's a case of it's a three year wait because I've, I've heard other people, they're getting seen pretty quick. So it all depends on how bad your hip is, and I think mine's quite bad. Might not be, I don't know. But yeah, let's get on these rods. It's quite dark, that picture. And I ain't got my sunglasses. Well, we've got a bit more wind. I might have to call the missus over in a minute so she can just take some bits and bobs back for me. She's only about 30, 40 yards away. It'll be hard work for her because she's got to get off a seat. <laughs> but she'll come, she'll help me out. She's a good old girl. But, yeah, so uh, I could have been further in the system for my hip and having it done. And I know you've got to get in the system and stuff, but I just, I can't think past one job at a time me I'm a typical bloke and uh, I want to get the houses done and then think right let's get the hip started and then once the hip is started if I get a house and I can't do it because I've got to go for this that and the other then I, that's it then isn't it I think those clouds look really nice in the back of the camera. I hope it comes out on film. But um, let's get this rod reeled in and get the bait changed on it. I've had a nice sit down, but it's not a massive sit down. This landing net and the telescopic arm cost me eight quid from the shop that was all bits that they had left and uh, it looked like it had been used and brought back so they knocked it down in price for me so I was quite chuffed with that where did I put that stopper I still I ain't lost that Where did I put the stop? I'm sure I'll come, I'll come across it, won't I? But I've lost it. Right. It must be Crab City out there, that's all I can say. Oh dear. Well, it is what it is, isn't it? Let's get this baited up. We'll bait this up, and then what I'll do is get it chucked out. I'm going to chuck it over there. I've tried over there. We'll chuck it out over there. This bait should still be on there. It's double thickness. It's on a bait holder hook. 
I can feel spits of rain now. I was hoping it wouldn't catch me out, but it looks like it's gonna. Right, well, we've got two heads on that. Two heads on the bottom and a strip on the top. Right, that's out short. Drag set. I'm going to get this all packed away here now and ask the wife to come and get a few bits for me just to help me out. I'll see you in a bit. Rod, that rod tip closest to us just tap then but it could be wind could be a crab uh, it's one of them days isn't it it's just one of them days it's uh you can't really do a lot you come on the, it's i was talking to karen this morning that'd be the wife and said uh forecast rain till wednesday and it's like for 12 hours rain so it's going to rain at some point but it forecasts rain today and it's scurrying around it's going around them hills from black comb all the way over there um <clears throat> but when you come on old in the uk as you know everybody does it it's you can own well you pick the week that you want and you just pick the month the week that's suitable and in that month it's generally good weather and that's what you hope for isn't it if you get some rain in between you get some rain don't you but hopefully today it's looking up as though the weather might not be right don't always get it right do they i mean i've been up there in february and i've come away with sunburn the whole week it was it was like summertime i mean that was global boiling back then I don't know how it just boiled for a week. But yeah, it was the best weather I've ever had in February. And we were up there. Matter of fact, we actually climbed Black Comb. It was cold when we got up top though, but it was uh, a storm had blown in that day. Um, and that was the only bad weather we had. And it went rain, 
it was just freezing cold because you, you're quite high up in the biggest of fells but you're quite high up so you pick your week in, in the month for your holiday in the UK and you just hope for the best don't you but fishing wise you can only catch what's there it isn't like going to the right spot with the right bait and everything I can go up to Whitehaven go to Matt's baits and get some bait from him but it's like over an hour's drive hour and a half drive I can go fishing while I'm up there and if I go up that way and go fishing I'll probably pop into him and see him but I don't have to because I brought five packs of squid I brought some crab and bluey and some black lug um, so I've got bait so if I want a fish and I'm down this end and I can get a session in I can fish but that's the bait I've got I've got no fresh worm no fresh rag it's just whatever it is and if those fish aren't biting um, and they aren't there or they aren't hungry and they're just looking at my bait it's what it is isn't it but there is quite a food crab out here there's some crab on air that's been washed up and they ain't got back um they're either what a fisherman's used but then i wouldn't think a fisherman would leave old crab there um could be what a seagull has picked up and dropped could be anything couldn't it but it's just nice being here so for those in the comments and those on messenger that keep saying Vern, you blanked I know I blank. <laughs> I'm actually here fishing. It does make me chuckle. Vern, good video. You didn't catch. You blanked. Well, I'm I'm pleased pleased that I forgot that. <laughs> Just makes me chuckle. But yeah, you can only come out. I mean, it is glorious, as you can see. It is absolutely glorious. That's to the right, and this is to the left. Absolutely fantastic. And the sky, well, you can see over Black Comb over there and it's all grey all the way around and then it dissipates there and then it's all lovely and blue wind keeps changing I think it's blowing over my right shoulder now so but there's not a lot happening on them rods is there lovely rods they are really light um, They need a pendulum or an off the ground cast to get the most out of them. So I shall be you taking there. If I fish the pair at Whitehaven this year, I don't know if I am, but if I do, I'm taking the sandstorms. Because they're only 12 foot, I'll be able to fit in on top of the wall a bit better and whack it out. With an off the ground cast, it'll be quite good. But I'd also like to see what they're like on the beach. But there's nothing as of yet. It is up to now a blankly blank checkbook and blank. <laughs> the time is now three o'clock and this is the time when we can get into our house. So where I am sat on the bank and I said to the wife, this year, we come up last night you see, this year will be the first year we get there and we're getting out at three we'll be in the pub by half four we ain't been shopping yet plus i'm on the west coast i've probably got an hour to get to barra probably an hour and ten minutes to get to barra and then get the shopping but what i think we might do is we might go to the house offload and then go to the shops come back and then i'm afraid to say it's pub night and i'm gonna get will then get back to the house and just get changed and go down the pub and that's what it's gonna be so uh here's the rods 
you can watch them as much as I can. You let me know if they move, but they ain't moving yet. It's nice to hear the seagulls. See, I can see them tips of them rods are just slightly moving. And I think that's the crabs. I haven't put any small size six hooks on, four hooks, or size two hooks on because I want to catch a bass. Um, the hooks that I've got on are only one ooze. A big flounder will take that. I want to catch a nice fish. Oh dear. I've had to sit on the box a bit, I'm afraid. I'm sorry about that, but here's the rods. Quite catching, I think, really. It's no, uh, do you know what I do love? Yeah. I love seagulls. I love hearing them cawing away. Well, that's a crow, isn't it? Gaggling, cackling, whatever they do. Ah, 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 ah. All that shit. Love it. Don't understand why people moan about them. Go on away, we uh, bugger off. Never bloody wave. I'm stood at the thing like this, waving, and nobody waves. So you got to tell them, ain't you? Bugger off. <laughs> Which was the first one I chucked out? It was this one here, wasn't it? Let's get this checked. Well, pet. We ain't going to get in the house on time, I'm afraid. I'm ever so sorry. But you know what the weather's going to be like, allegedly.
Oh dear. Well, baits are stripped again. And I think I even, yeah, I tied that on. I don't know what's out there, but whatever is out there is eating my baits alive. Um, I'm going to retire that rod and just fish the one. I might have one more cast out with the other rod with my bait that I've got. It's annoying. But that's fishing, isn't it? This is why we do it. It's been nice being there. It's been enjoyable. Bit of weed on there. Could just do with a few more fish, couldn't we? Be nice to catch just a bloody flounder. Anything, just to sort of like say that we've caught something. Do you know what I mean? It is what it is. This sun is glorious. It weren't meant to be like this. This is what the wife was saying to me. I was like getting in the doldrums because. Uh, well, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, it's just going to rain, rain, rain. I'm going to be up there and all we'll do is, which won't be a bad thing, is drink in the pub. But, um, you can't drink yourself stupid, can you? Well, I don't think I can, then people are coming back now. When they come back, I'm going to ask them how far of a walk it is from uh, the vanishing point. How much further is it to get over to the beach and I might try it because I don't think anybody fishes there not that I have ever seen and I think this is the only way onto that beach from there so yeah this is the little icon reel it's cheap reel it is a size 40 it's a spin icon spin 40 it's not bad um, when you get heavy weight on it, this moves about from side to side as the bail arm goes around. But what I do like is with this braid, um, and I know you all know this, but the bite detection on that is, is unbelievable. You can, it's, even I can see a bite, which it's unbelievable. I ain't the sort of person that see many bites. That's the way it is. But yeah, it's not bad, it's cheap. And it came already loaded with braid on it. So that was a good thing. I've got another reel in here with some really light line on for mullet fishing. Um, mullet fishing. Did I think I'd catch a mullet? Yeah, of course I did. Because what I saw last year, there was like over a hundred mullet over there. But there's none here today. So they could be over there, they could be over there, they could be down river, they could be further out in the estuary, couldn't they? You don't know, do you? Um, I did bait up with bread, chuck loads out there, and mullet obviously don't, as soon as you chuck that bread in there, come zooming in like Speedy Gonzales. So, mullet fishing is hard. I know it's hard, you watch plenty of videos and people just don't go out there and catch a mullet. Not unless they're professional, do it all their life and know what they're doing. This is my first attempt at mullet. <laughs> and I would say along with many more sessions that I try for mullet, it'll be a failure. But you never know your luck, do you? I might go try, um, I'll probably come back here again, but this, this is now feeling a bit like Bootle Beach. And Bootle Beach, well, you know my luck there. It is hopeless. So, we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? We shall just have to wait and see. I am coming back here and fishing this again, this mark. So you will see another video here. very peaceful but you need a sunny day you do not need rain and look at this we got the moo cows moo
Come on. No, they're not looking. Come on. He's thinking, shut up, I'm eating my grass. So that's the way it is, isn't it? He's eating his grass. Rods. Well, that rod still ain't moved. I don't think it'll move all day or all night. I got here last night at midnight and the water was in and I could have fished it last night. And the wife said to me today, she said, you could have fished it last night. But I'm afraid to say, them days have gone, long gone. And the energy I had back in the day to then do that, turn up after a long drive and go fishing, those days are gone. see you in a bit I shall put that rod away and then what I'll do is we'll reel that one in and cast out again right let's get this rod because something was clicking again and the weather's coming in I think there's a weather front coming in there so let's get this You can laugh. Oh, dear. I nearly fell over again then. Let's go have a look at these little booties. Yeah, let's wave at the train. Don't wave, do they? Just didn't wave. How ignorant. Hello. Now then, I don't want to tell you anything, boys, but you're all boys, so you're going to be for the meat market. So enjoy that grass. Eat, yeah, I can, I can smell you. Just enjoy yourself, because it's probably be next year. I hope it isn't this year. Isn't they beautiful, though, eh? Frisians. They're all boys, or bullocks. Because they ain't got any bollocks. Or are they girls? No, they aren't girls. They've got no adders. That would be in the human species, that would be boobies. But yeah, no, isn't they lovely? Oh, are you missing me? Come on. Actually, they got to be on YouTube. What's your name? See, you ain't even got a name, any of the bastards, aren't they? 101, 100192. Hello, mate. Here's the thumbnail. Hey, fishing and blanking. Do I smell that bad? Because I've been sleeping with the wife, innit? It's because I've been sleeping with the wife. In close proximity it is, isn't it? Yeah, no. They're lovely, aren't they? And if we didn't eat them, they wouldn't be there, would they? Because that farmer would be doing something else. So, uh, it is what it is. Um, yeah, so this is it. I was going to cast that out again, but the time is 20 past three. We're supposed to have uh, been in the house now. 
and have got our shopping and have had our tea because we'd have got there at dinner had food got shopping and then we'd have been in the house and then at the pub but we'll still get to the pub tonight anyhow we will get to the pub tonight and I had to make the most of this day because of the weather it is not going to be a nice few days and uh, I've enjoyed myself yeah I know I've blanked you don't have to tell me you don't have to tell me on whatever but if you do want to tell me let me know because I might have forgotten by now because this is video number four um, it's been great here I am in Cumbria I've got cows in the background I've got the wife and no jokes about that it just I just said it the way it is I've got cows in the background I've got the wife in the van she's helped me bring some of my stuff here and she's come here and took some of the stuff away so thanks a lot pet has been uh, a, a good thing because my hip walking on this gorse is uh, hard work will I come back here again yeah I think I will but there is so many crabs it's unbelievable perhaps another day there won't be any crabs I don't know using the Daiwa sandstorms it's been fantastic I didn't realize they were that light um, I want to use them on the beach or somewhere where I can off the ground cast them because that's the whole idea of it so this has been fishing here I don't know where it is but it's absolutely picturesque I've had a gap in the wind weather which is why I've fished and put the house getting bit in the house and the shop and back so that I can get a fishing session in in the dry without having to get wet because the next few days it's going to be wet so I'm pleased if you've got this far I hope you've enjoyed it enjoyed it and that's it next time you see me after this blank and I just felt some rain on my face the next time you see me it'll either be on a beach or on a pier or it'll be back here again because it ain't far away and it's a nice place for me to to fish and I might travel a bit lighter and just spin off the mullet either fish for mullet here or I'm gonna fish with just one rod and just uh, travel lighter because I might walk all the way down there and fish down there we can only give it a go can't we so next time you see me I will be fishing that's the main thing I hope you've enjoyed this I've enjoyed being here when I shouldn't be here fishing <laughs> I'm gutted really because I ain't caught that's what the matter is that's why I'm now rattling on but I'll see you in the next video I'll see you anon Where am I going with this? Tom, if that's crap, just ch cut that out. I've just started rattling on like I do, and then uh, you get lost because you think, oh Christ, you've said someone, someone's gonna get upset about this, someone's gonna be, oh, sod it, that's what I say.